I am Steve Gibson. I am a vice president at Gearbox Software. Looks like those alien bastards drank all my beer. So the, the game was in development for a little bit, a um, couple of years. Where uh, Gearbox got involved was uh, right around the time we were doing Borderlands also with 2K games. And it wasn't something where like, oh, well, it's about the ship. We'll just take credit for it. Like, I mean, it's, it's been a, a big deal for us. We are in a very fortunate situation. Um, I think the, the best thing I can point to, so everyone remembers like 2001, that, that E3 trailer that came out, right? Uh, there was that, that was honestly one of the best trailers ever come out, right? That was just balls out, crazy, awesome. Um, <laughs> so what happened was the, the, the end of that trailer, there's a list of names, right? There's about 15 names or so. Um, if you look at that list of names, all but one of those guys actually ended up working at Gearbox Software. I think we have a lot of guys there who are very invested in the, the history and the legacy and really understand Duke Nukem. Um, so I think that uh, we're the perfect studio for that. We were in just an amazing position and it was really fortunate that we just happened to be finishing Borderlands at the time and we happened to be doing that with the publisher who has the publishing rights for that game. We happened to be in the same town and we all knew George and Scott and those guys and heck, play poker with those guys every week, still do. I'm so glad you're okay. All right, time for my reward. I guess here's, here's the thing. When, when I buy a game, and I think most gamers buy a game, um, they buy it because they want to be entertained. Um, they don't buy it because it has, uh, I don't know, like the, the, the most characters that you can play a character class, like, oh, I'm going to buy a Street Fighter 7 because it has 50 player characters. Like, all they care about and all, just about all gamers care about is, am I going to have fun? Am I going to sit there laughing and smiling and talking to my friends about this? You know, it's the same reason I go to see a movie. I will go see some small indie movie or I'll go, so, go see 20, 2012. I don't care how it's happened. As long as I'm entertained, I'm entertained. Me, I love that it is not your simple just run around shooting things. I love that there are those cognitive, like, you know, things you need to figure out. There are those, those moments where you play, you play with that remote control car early on, right? And then, you, you know, about an hour or two later, you see that car again, but this time you see a pad that you can get shrinked on. You can go get shrunk, hop in that car, and then drive it all around and do all these crazy things. Like, there's these surprising things that um, just really feels just like, just plain fun, you know? And it's just amazing, this world and this environment is just so unique. The, the game takes place roughly 10 years or so of, since Duke Nukem last saved the world, right? So um, now we're, you know, about a decade later, Duke's sitting in his living room playing his own game, and he's like, man, finally, this game's out, right? This better be good, it's taking this while. Um, and what has happened since then is that the world has changed so that, you know, he's buddies with the president now, and he's buddies with, like, uh, he's rich and famous, and he's franchised himself. He's, you know, like Duke's Lady Killer Casino, Duke Burger, um, Duke's Titty City that we're here in today. Um, the, the man himself has just become even larger, if you can imagine. Um, and you actually get to experience that even more now because you get to see these different areas of like how him saving the world has changed this world and how all the world perceives him now. You'll see all his fans screaming and yelling for him, taking pictures, wanting his autograph. I mean, in this game, you actually can sign autographs. You know. Come get some May 6th.